<clears throat> Hello there. Well, hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian. I'm Ian the Reader. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, glad to have you. If you're returning, thank you so dearly for coming back. It's been a while. So uh, you can tell some things have changed. I have new glasses. That's the biggest, most important change of all. Uh, but yeah, my life has been a little bit crazy over the last like three months. So I've switched jobs and I have sold my home and moved to a new city. I've lived in the same city like pretty much my whole life and I moved 30 minutes away from there. It's not like a crazy move, but it feels crazy to me. Um, so life has been a little bit hectic. And unfortunately my booktube channel and just making content in general has definitely uh, gone on the back burner, but I have new bookshelves and I'm in my new home and I'm very, very excited and eager to be making content again, which feels great. Like uh, we all knew and noticed that my content had been kind of uh, dwindling before all of the craziness, but now I'm excited. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be making content, excited to be talking to you guys. I hope you're all well. Please leave me a comment letting me know down below what you've been up to. If there have been any crazy life changes going on with you guys, if you've been reading anything good lately, it's time to catch up. It's time to get back on track and I'm very excited about it. But thank you all so much for your patience. Let's go ahead and jump into the video though. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my reading plans for the month of July slash my Battle of the Bands 2.0 Decades Edition TBR. So if you've been uh, following my channel, then you know that back in April, I was a team captain for Battle of the Bands 1, the uh, wonderful readathon hosted by Jake from The Bookish Drummer and his fiance Stacy. They did a great job hosting uh, that readathon last time in April, and I had so much fun with it that when they asked me to come back for the next one, I was immediately signing up for that. So pumped to be the team captain for Team Fleetwood Mac. So hyped. We have a great band. We have great prompts. We're gonna win. It's gonna be fantastic. I could not be more excited. Just to tell you a little bit about this readathon, this is the Decades Edition. So last time there were just some bands that were chosen that are very popular bands, and that's still the case this time, but it's Decades themed. I am the captain of the 70s team. Like I said, Fleetwood Mac, super excited about that because the 70s are awesome. Fleetwood Mac is awesome. I'm awesome. You're awesome. It's gonna be a great mix. For the 80s, we have Team Journey headed by Nalia from Here There Be Books. From the 90s, we have Team Nirvana headed by Nico from Nico's Book Review. And for the 2000s, we have Team Green Day headed by Jake from The Bookish Drummer. Definitely go check out the other team captains. I will leave links to their channels down below. They're all wonderful people, fantastic content creators, and I am super excited to beat them in this readathon. We have some fantastic prompts based on songs by the different bands. They're all super fun and I'm really excited about all of them. There are only 16 prompts. I say only 16 because that means you have to read 16 books. But if you participated last time, you know there were 20 prompts, which means you had to read 20 books, which was a lot. I barely managed to do it. A handful of other people did as well, but 16 is definitely more manageable than 20. There will also be some different like bonus challenges to get extra points for your team. I'll go ahead and leave a link to Jake's video talking about all the rules and everything. I'm not really here to do that. I just wanted to say though, if you do want to participate in this readathon, you have until the end of June to sign up for a team. The link to the Bookish Drummer Discord is down below. Go on there to choose your team and we would love to have you. But moving on, I'm here today to talk to you guys about my TBR for this readathon. Super excited about all the books that I've chosen to read. I tried to be strategic and have like a lot of short ones but I learned about myself that I will have my TBR as a plan and I will definitely uh, not stick to it entirely. Like maybe 50, 60% of my TBR from last time did I actually utilize, um, but that's fine. I'm open to that. These are, this is just my plan, okay? This is just the plan and I will let myself do whatever I have to do to win this thing. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into my TBR. So the first team is Team Fleetwood Mac, my wonderful team. And our first prompt is Go Your Own Way, a book you don't think anyone would buddy read with you. For this prompt, I have chosen The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon. Pynchon, I don't know how you say his name. The reason that I've chosen this book for this prompt is because I really don't think anybody would buddy read it with me. Thomas Pynchon is known for being a pretty challenging 
author, um, and just typically the people that I have similar reading taste to here on booktube aren't necessarily as drawn to his work. Some people are, uh, but I just don't see anybody wanting to buddy read this with me. Don't tell me you want to buddy read it with me because then I'll have to change my book. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. It's pretty short. Uh, it has to be at least 150 pages and wouldn't you know it, it's 152 pages. So hot dog, go me. Prompt number two is a book with a relentless character who will stop at nothing. So for this prompt, I have chosen The Magician's Elephant by Kate DiCamillo. I don't know if I said her last name right, but who I am. Uh, yeah, so this is a book that actually popped up on my radar when I listened to Ann Patchett's most recent uh, essay collection, These Precious Days. She talks about this author's uh, middle grade fiction and how much it means to her. In this book in particular, she highly, highly, highly recommends. And uh, it sounds absolutely wonderful. It's a lot about a boy uh, who basically he goes to this fortune teller and the fortune teller tells him that he needs to find this elephant that will lead him to the answer of whether or not his sister's alive. So he goes on this journey to find this magic elephant or the magician's elephant, what have you. Um, and so he's definitely relentless and he won't give up because he wants to find out if his sister's okay. So very excited about this. I'm a little worried it's gonna be emotional though because I've read a couple other books by her and I remember them being emotional, so oh well. Prompt number three is a book with a character in a situation or place you dream of being in. By the way, my laptop is down here with all my prompts. I'm not just like staring off into space or the floor looking for the answers. It's down here. So for this prompt, I have chosen The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. I believe a good portion of this book takes place in Paris and another portion of this book takes place in Spain. Both places that I would love to visit one day, so I dream of being there. There you go. Short as well. And the final prompt for Fleetwood Mac is The Chain, a book chosen for you based on the scavenger hunt. So Jake and Stacy came up with this really cool scavenger hunt to help you find this book. And here is me doing that scavenger hunt. Okay, we're going on an adventure together on this scavenger hunt. Let's go. Step one, grab any favorite book. It's gonna go with the first favorite book that I see. Okay, there we go. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Step two, find another book in a series with the same color scheme on the cover of oh, crap. I went with The Given Day by Dennis Lehane, which is the first book in some series that I don't know the name of, but it's got like red and orange, so I'll take it. Step three, take the most recent release or last book in the series and find another book that has the same number of letters in the title, what? So book three in that series is called World Gone By and it has 11 letters in the title, so I need to find a book with 11 letters in the title. Here we go. I got it, Near the Bone has 11 letters, heck yeah. Step four, take the fourth or last letter in that title and find a book whose title starts with that letter. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, R. Great job. So I need a book that starts with the letter R. I wonder if you'll find one before I will. <laughs> oh, no, I thought that said real beauty. It says easy beauty, shoot. Where is one? Ha <laughs> ha, Red Rising, here we go. Step five, pick something on the cover and find a book with that thing in the title. So we have a wolf. Do I have any books with a wolf in the title? So I cheated slightly because the wolf symbol is a symbol for the howlers in Red Rising and I have Howling Dark by Christopher Rocchio right here. So I'll count it. Step six, find another book in the same genre or subgenre. Okay, so sci-fi. There we go, got one right here. Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. Step seven, take one of the author's initials and find another book by an author who shares one of those initials. So I actually have a lot of options here because Ursula K. Le Guin. We're gonna say that's UKLG, even though technically I guess it's probably just UKL. You had to know with K as an option, I was gonna pick Stephen King though. So Stephen King, Wizard and Glass. And step eight is to read that book. So there we go. So there you have it for the prompt, the chain. I am reading Wizard and Glass by Stephen King, probably. This is hugely chunky, uh, but I did manage to get through book three, The Wasteland last month very, very quickly. And so I could see myself doing that again with Wizard of Glass and I'm very eager to continue with the Dark Tower series. So I'm hoping to read this. I may save it for the end of the month. And if I feel like I don't have enough time to read such a large book, I'll go ahead and pick something else because I do have a lot of options, but that's the goal.
With that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Team Journey. Prompt number five is any way you want it, a book with a spoiled or greedy character. So this one was actually a little bit of a challenge for me, but I ended up going with The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. It is about a man reflecting on this affair that he's had with another man's wife. And that sounds greedy to me. He, he isn't content with the other women that he could have had as his lover. He had to take another man's wife, so greedy. Prompt number six is Who's Crying Now? A book that you know has made someone else cry. For this, I've chosen Atonement by Ian McEwen. I really like this guy's name. Something about it just really sounds awesome to me. Don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, but I've heard really good things about Atonement. I've heard that it can get emotional, uh, both in the book and in the movie, so I'll read it. Might watch it as well. Emotions. Prompt number seven is open arms, a book in a genre or subgenre you're willing to try or try more of. So I need to read more nonfiction. I know this about myself. I've come to terms with it. I'm trying to be better. And so I'm gonna do a nonfiction book. I've chosen a memoir called Sync by Joseph Earl Thomas. I really don't know a whole lot about this. I remember it sounding really interesting and Aardvark Book Club was kind enough to send it to me for free in my complimentary book box, uh, which was super cool. By the way, if you wanna try Aardvark for $4, you should totally use the link in my description down below. It's good through the end of June. So you have a couple days, you should totally do that. But yes, very excited about this memoir. It's only like 220 pages and I need to read more nonfiction. So it works out. And the final prompt for Journey is Don't Stop Believing, a book in a series that you believe will be completed one day. For this, I have chosen Return of the Griffin, book two in the Hybrid Helix series by J.C.M. Byrne. Been meaning to read this for a long time. I loved book one when I read it last year, and I've really actually just been saving book two and book three for when I really need something to like get me out of a reading slump. These are super fun. It's like superhero sci-fi. I have a blast with these. And uh, yeah, he is, I don't know if he's working on book four or not, but I'm 95% sure there will be more than three books and there are currently three books out. And I believe he'll finish it one day. I believe in you, man. Okay, so that brings us to Team Nirvana, the 90s team for this readathon. Prompt number nine is Smells Like Team Spirit, a book Teen Spirit? Teen Spirit. A book featuring a rebellious teenage character. For this, I've chosen After Ever After by Jordan something. Can't remember his name, but this is the sequel to Drums, Girls, and Dangerous Pie, which is one of Jake's favorite books, if not his favorite book. He recommends it a lot on his channel, and I did read it last month, and I thought it was really, really great, so I'm very eager to get to book two, um, and it's pretty dang short. I finished book one in a day, so I'm very hopeful that I'll finish book two in a day, and I'm very excited about reading this, so yeah. Prompt number 10 is Lithium, a book with an element from the periodic table in the title. So for this, I have a long book and I have a short book chosen. So the long book, the one I would like to read is Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. I've been meaning to continue this series for so long and I know that book six comes out at the end of July, so I should read Iron Gold. But if I don't feel like I'm gonna have enough time, there's also a book called Titanium Noir that I'm very interested in as well. And it's only like 250 pages, so that's my backup. Iron Gold is my probable one, but Titanium Noir is a backup, so there you go. Prompt number 11 is Come As You Are, a book you had on your July TBR prior to the readathon. So for this, I have a new release called A Twisted Love Story by Samantha Downing, who is my favorite mystery thriller author. Her new book comes out in July, near the end of it, and uh, I was picking that up day one anyway, so very excited that there's a prompt that I can use for this book. So pumped. Prompt number 12, the final prompt for Nirvana, is All Apologies, a book you've had to apologize for not reading yet. So for this one, I've gone ahead and chosen a series that I've been needing to get to, and that is Discworld by Terry Pratchett. I actually had this series, or one of the books, as one of my TBR choices for the last readathon, and I didn't read it. So we'll see if it happens this time. But yes, I've been meaning to read the series for a long time. Everyone loves it, and I'm always like, yep, I haven't read it, so sorry. Uh, so very excited to read it. I will either read Mort by Terry Pratchett or The Color of Magic. These are the only two that I have. I've been told they're both good starting points for the series. I do have the audiobook for The Color of Magic, so I may go with that one, but I've heard that Mort is a better introduction to Discworld, so we'll see what happens. But one of these. Alrighty folks, the last 
Team, Team Green Day. Prompt number 13 is American Idiot, a book featuring an ignorant character. So for this one, I've actually chosen The Orchard Keeper by Cormac McCarthy. McCarthy recently passed away and I've been wanting to read more of his books before that, but also just because he's been very front of mind uh, since he recently did pass away. So I'm very excited about reading The Orchard Keeper. This is his debut novel, or at least his debut published novel, I believe. Um, and yeah, based on the description, it definitely seems like there's some ignorant characters in here. So I hope I love this one. Prompt number 14 is Boulevard of Broken Dreams, a book with loneliness or isolation as a theme. For this prompt, I have chosen No Longer Human by <laughs> Osamu Desai, maybe? I hope so. Uh, yeah, so this book is quite famously known for its themes of isolation and loneliness and just sorrow in general. So uh, this could fit for the books that have made people cry prompt as well, but I fit it here and it's nice and short. It is over 150 pages though. It's like 177. So yes, ready for all those emotions. The second to last prompt is Wake Me Up When September Ends, a book you would typically read during spooky season. So for this, I've chosen Nestlings, the upcoming novel by author Nat Cassidy, who wrote Mary, which was a book that I absolutely loved last year. I have an early copy of this and I have been super eager to get to it. I did actually start it a couple months ago, but I've since put it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this one over and get into it, but it was super creepy, the parts that I was reading. So it definitely seems like more of an october -y kind of book for me. And the final prompt is Know Your Enemy, a book from an enemy team captain's favorite list. So myself and the other team captains put together a list of our 10, not necessarily like our favorite books, but 10 of our favorite books. And uh, yes, there are those lists for other teams to fill this prompt with. So I can't pick any of mine, obviously, I've already read them. So I have to pick from another team captain's list. And there were a lot of options. All three of my co-captains had a lot of really great options. I'm still not 100% sure which person's uh, recommendation I'm gonna go with. I may go with Nico's recommendation. He recommended uh, The King's Dragon, I believe it's called, by Kate Elliott. I believe, I don't know anything. I think that's the author's name. Um, and I'm supposed to read that anyway for my 12 books recommended by 12 booktubers challenge. But he also recommended like Long Play, blah, blah, blah. He also recommended The Long Price Quartet though, and I have to read that because it was Pete from The Ponderings of Pete's recommendation for that same challenge. And then Jake has like five books I wanna read. So I might go with Tender as the Flesh by Jake because it's short and I am dying to read that book. I've heard so much about it. Not necessarily all good things, but I wanna know how I feel about it. Um, yeah, we'll see. There's a lot of options. So I haven't decided on that one, but we'll see what happens. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I swear. I swear to you, I will be back soon, very soon. I'm planning a like six month recap video because I haven't posted a wrap up the entire year so far. So that's six months of books that I need to catch you guys up on. And it's like more than 80 books. So it's gonna be a long video when I do come back, but I will be back very soon, I promise. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys do choose to join this readathon. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. And thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.